to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And today is episode 132. And I know it might it might be heavy again for some of you guys, but I, I feel this is the direction we're supposed to go. So last last week we talked about panic attacks. And today I want to I want to speak to physical trauma. Or better yet, finding peace when you have experienced physical trauma. Once again, I you know this episode might might be a bit heavy for people as well. But if you yourself or someone you know has been through physical trauma and has not found relief, this episode is for you. Part of this life and is agency. We have the agency to make our choices, and so does everyone else. You know, many people think that there's not a God in the world because bad things happen. Actually, bad things are just a sign that God loves us enough to let us have our agency. And sometimes the agency of others is going to infringe upon our own. I don't want to share any specifics because I haven't asked for permission to do so. But I have seen plenty of people around me go through massive, massive physical trauma. People that were attacked, people that were raped, people that were... I insert whatever, I mean, and, and, and some things I, I won't even speak to just because I, I can't say them. I want you to know, first of all, that no matter what you have been through, you are not worthless, and that experience has no bearing upon who you are as a person. That that experience just means that somebody else did something really awful to you, and one day they will be held accountable for that thing that they did. But I want you to know that no matter what they told you, no matter even if they swore you to secrecy that it never happened, or they'd hurt you or they'd hurt a family member or something, no matter what, it was not your fault. It doesn't matter what you were wearing. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't even matter how bad they said that you wanted them to do whatever you want, whatever they said. And I want you to know that you having gone through that experience, there is hope. I can speak to a a very popular experience, popular is not the right word, but a well-known experience. You know, that of the girl that was uh, up in Utah, Elizabeth Smart, since since her story is very public. When, you know, she was kidnapped at the age of 14. And I I don't need to count all of the details, but the gist of it is that she was raped repeatedly, often. Now, especially if something happened to you when you were younger, somebody might have said horrible things like, you deserve this. God doesn't love you. Um, Tell anybody about this and I'll kill you. I want you to know that Heavenly Father loves you. I want you to know that what happened to Elizabeth Smart was not right. It was not fair. And, And sometimes, even on that line of fairness, we get to the point of, well, why did this happen to me? It happened to you because people make choices in their life that affect your agency. I mean, somebody 
goes and drives a, you know, a drunk driver drives down the street and kills somebody's family. This is not to get into detail about, well, maybe God wanted that to happen. No. I have no idea what God wants, so I can't speak for God. But I... People make choices. That's it. You're not a bad person. You didn't do anything wrong. If you said the word stop and they, or no and they didn't stop or no, then it wasn't your fault. And worse, if they drugged you or anything else, like, it wasn't your fault. So how do you find peace? How do you find the ability to get past these things in your life. First of all, you know that I want you to know that there is hope. And I want you to know that there is a loving Heavenly Father that loves you. And I even believe that He sent strength by your side when that horrible thing was happening. Now, I want to invite you, as I'm about to share what I'm about to share next, to really look at it with an open mind. I'm probably going to share a very different understanding than you guys are used to. My whole purpose, my whole goal in sharing these things today is to help you move forward in your life in the way that you desire. This isn't to force you forward. This isn't to say, well, this thing happened to you and it happened so many years ago, you should already be over it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just giving you an opportunity. I'm giving you an invitation to move forward if you'll take it. The events that happen to you they are in the past. They are not currently happening to you in this moment. And if they are, please get out. Please just get out. If they are happening to you in the moment. But if they're not happening to you in the moment, then they're in the past. Now, some people would say that experience is going to affect you for your entire life. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know you I, that, that I'm talking to. But what if it didn't have to? What if you really could move forward with your life? Going back to Elizabeth Smart, her innocence was taken away when she was 14. She was a quote-unquote good girl that probably did a lot of really good things. She had a lot of amazing things going for her. And then for nine months, she went through this really, really awful experience. Or, now, I understand that Elizabeth Smart is <clears throat> in a totally different place now, and I understand this experience happened years ago, but it was just the one that came to my mind to share. She could be so upset at that captor. Or she could understand that he just wasn't in his right mind. And she did the things that she had to to survive. She, she said things she had to to survive. She probably did many things that were awful and disgusting to survive. That doesn't make her awful and disgusting. When we're put in those type of situations, like what you do under, under force is not up to you, no matter how many people say it is.
But what did, what did she do afterwards? What, what do we do afterwards? Do we hold on to our anger and our frustration? And I guess, you know, if you have a grudge against somebody, this, this could even work for that too. Or, there's another way to look at this. We can see the psychological innocence of that person. Now, please understand, I am not saying that they're innocent of the crime that they committed. I'm saying they weren't in their right mind. And their understanding of, in their understanding of life, in their worldview, there wasn't anything wrong with that. Now, of course, you know, as we look at it, there was. But sometimes when you look at things closer, you see more deeply. Having compassion, having forgiveness for somebody is so much more helpful. There was a story of a woman that up in uh, New York, up in New York, and a kid that was just, you know, not really in his right mind, probably they'd, they'd stolen some things and they stole a frozen turkey. And, and he threw it through her window. And it caused her all kinds of pain for probably the rest of her life. Holding on to anger, holding on to to frustration, holding on to hate only hurts you. Now, some people might say, but Joseph, if, if, if I don't hold on to this, then they got away with it. And sometimes they probably actually got away with it. Some of the people that did things to you guys never faced repercussions for what they did. One day they will. But they'll face them from a loving God that knew exactly what, what happened to that person in their life. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying because bad things happen to us, we can do bad things to other people. I'm saying that having a better understanding of why they do things kind of takes a little bit of the, a little bit of the hate and the anger out of it. It's been said oftentimes that hurt people hurt other people. People that have been through a lot, they do hurt other people. And it doesn't make it right, but it does give you a little bit of an understanding. You know, I remember when, you know, when I was younger, like a, a certain kid you know, kind of attacked me a little bit at school one time. And it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. I wasn't like, but, but it scared me a little bit. And then, you know what? I found out about his home life and he didn't have a great one. That, I, I don't, no, guys, honestly, I haven't thought about that experience in years. I probably <laughs> I, I hadn't probably thought about it much since way back then. But you can see the good in somebody. And you don't have to, you can hate the thing that was done, but you don't have to hold on to this anger. You don't have to hold on to this hate. Okay, so now, now you're saying, Joseph. So what if I did want to say, okay, like, let's give them, you know, like they did something awful and they weren't in the right mind, but what do I do? How do, how do I move forward? So, so I'm going to, I'm going to warn you guys about what I'm about to say, because it might, it, it might come off differently. It was them that did the thing to you originally. The past experience that is over, that for some of you hasn't happened in 20 years. 
And it is you, and more specifically, your habitual thought, as we talked about a few weeks ago, that is keeping the experience alive. If I don't water a plant, it, it dies. How, how do we water like these plants, or how do we give life to these experiences? By continuing to think about them. Yes, if you sit there and think about this horrible thing that was done to you, you're not going to feel good. And going back even to last week, one of the thoughts I had right before I recorded this today is that the bad feeling is hopefully so you stop thinking about it. Do you really have to relive this awful experience every second of the day? That is what the adversary wants. But you don't. You truly can give this experience over to Heavenly Father. So you might be saying, Joseph, but what do I do? What do I do when that experience comes up? When I, when I see those things that remind me of that person, when you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe a song comes on or you drive by a building or you're in that town or, or you see that person. You be still. You be still. And then you realize, hey, when I'm, starting to think, I'm starting to overthink about this. I mean, you've suffered and struggled for these past 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Did you really like the person that did that enough to you to control the rest of your life too? I've heard it said that rape is not about sex. It's about control. A, a, a giant person takes advantage of a girl that is small enough to take advantage of. Because they can. There is no love in that. It's all about control. But what do you do? How do you heal? Stop watering the plant. Whatever it is that keeps you watering that plant, keeping this memory alive, stop watering the plant. Please understand, I am not speaking like, come on, get it. Why, why don't you get this yet? It's that easy. Okay, I'm not doing that. I understand, as I shared from my own experiences last week, that some of these things just take a little while. But if you're willing to play and if you're willing to explore and you're willing to even look right now, for example, if you think about the times you've thought about that experience, has it left you feeling good? I know some people would have you, I mean, I, I come from a, a background of a little bit of NLP and some of that stuff where they'd have you go through and relive your memory and add funny music and add all that other stuff to change the memory. You don't need to do that. No, I, I've done plenty of that. But you don't need to. You just need to stop breathing life into the experience and it will die. Anytime you start to think about it, just notice yourself thinking about it and say, hold up, let's stop, let's pause. If you can learn to pause, if you can learn to see, well, I'm starting, I'm starting to think about it, I'm starting to have these horrible, awful feelings. Guys, that's those horrible, awful feelings is you putting your hand on the hot stove and Heavenly Father saying, hey, stop. Stop thinking about this. Not in a way of, come on, why can't you stop thinking about this? But in a simple like, hey, if you don't think about that, you're going to be better off. No, it doesn't actively always work that way. It's necessarily, it, it's just doing the best you can and noticing and say, hey, when I think about that, it hurts. Okay, maybe you don't think about that. And this works for any of the other past memories and things that you've been through in your life. It's not just the massive trauma experiences. 
But if you stop thinking and giving life about your traumatic experiences, they eventually will die or they'll be pretty close to dead on like life support. They'll come up every now and then. That's how they do. As I shared last week, there are aftershocks from our experiences. I still have aftershocks from many, many, many years. People that have treated me certain ways or, you know, things like that. Like everybody's got aftershocks. But when you understand and you can get your thinking to settle down, you will do so much better. You can't force it to settle. It's more so just, if I stop looking at it, then it it doesn't, like, it goes away. If you ignore most people, unless they're super persistent, after a while they will go away. I guarantee you, Heavenly Father is not up there reminding you of your experience every second of the day. He's comforting you. He's loving you. And he's also through feelings saying, hey, stop thinking about that. But no, I could help people with this experience if I, you know, if I keep thinking about it. If you want to help people with that experience, then treat it like a book. When you go into opportunities to share that experience, take the book off the shelf. And when you're done reading the book, when you're done telling the story and sharing what you learned, put it back on the shelf. I mean, even last week, like my, my experience, like, don't get me wrong, guys. There's still a little, there's still some thinking about the experience I shared last week. But it's not what it was. I, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to learn. I'm beginning to see, oh, okay, my hand's on the hot stove. Heavenly Father wants me to stop thinking about it so I don't do any more damage. What if you really could move forward in your life? Regardless of this person that did this thing to you years ago. Well, let me ask you something. When you're not thinking about that thing, do you feel better or do you feel worse? My guess is you probably feel better. And then when the thought comes up, oh, wait, but this happened to me. <gasps> Uh-oh, I got to be like this. You don't have to do that. You don't have to think about it. And if you stop breathing life into that experience, it will die. One of the reasons it's been harder for me to let go of my experience is because my thought, when that thought comes up of the story I shared last week, is, oh no, th this is God directing me to change my path. When actually everything that Heavenly Father's done in my life has done the exact opposite. He's actually had to push me away because I got so locked in my head that the other path is the one I was supposed to take. If I think about that, if I, you know, if, if I drive by places that make me think about that, if I hear certain words, I'm going to have that yucky feeling. It's just telling me, stop thinking about it. I, I guarantee that Heavenly Father is not. I'm, I'm going to speak to something because I, I know sometimes people wake up in the middle of the night with nightmares and stuff. And I guarantee God is not going to wake you up. Because I know there's the popular thought, if God wakes me up at 3 a.m., then he wants to talk to me sometimes. But the adversary knows that too. And the thing I've learned more in my life is you better believe that I know there's a God. You better believe I know there's an adversary. And people can believe whatever they want, but I've seen plenty of things in my life. The adversary would wake you up at 3 a.m. to remind you of that. The adversary comes in and he says, you know, if only you would have been a better person, this wouldn't have happened to you. I 
I, I, sometimes when I'm talking to someone, I'll, I'll go into like this, I don't know, slightly creepy voice when I, when I say stuff like that so that people get a feeling, but I, I don't even like doing it because it, it just feels weird. But those thoughts that come in and are like, hey, you know, if you wouldn't have worn that outfit, you wouldn't have been raped. So this is your fault. That's just the adversary. You don't even have to give him any credit, though. You don't even have to give him any attention. The, the more you're able to ignore these experiences or the thoughts about your experiences that you've had in your life, the happier you will be. If you stop thinking about the things that are making you miserable, you are happy. If, like, if I go into a movie and it's one that I just, yeah, like just leaves me feeling awful and I continue to go watch that movie, that's on me. Well, now it's a little bit different in the fact that like with our mind, thoughts just kind of slide into our heads so fast. We don't even notice. It's like, it's, it's almost like you're watching TV and, and somebody like, I mean, you half like fall asleep for a, like a half second and you open your eyes and, and there's a different channel on and somebody's changed the channel. It's a little bit like that. It happens so quickly, we don't even realize it. We're sucked in so fast. Well, the second you notice you're being sucked in, say, whoa, hold up, hold up. And come back to being still. I mean, there's, there's a song by, a, I think it's actually by Snoop Dogg that says, hold up, it's time for the next episode. And I think that's actually beautiful. Hold up. I'm going down. My, my thoughts are sliding down this path again. No. It's time for the next episode. It's time for the next phase of your life where this thing no longer hinders you. Where, and honestly, if you've got something super deep and you want to come talk to somebody, I've got a couple Ask Me Anything calls I do almost every month. Feel free to come on. You'd be amazed at even the people that come on to that free call and really listen to the podcast, how much their lives have changed. <laughs> it's so cool to see. It's time for your next episode of life. It's time for you to leave this traumatic experience behind. If you want to take it off the shelf every now and then to share your experiences with someone else, by all means, you're welcome to. But stop it, like living the story every moment of the day. There's nothing to do except be still. I mean, one of the places I go to that you're welcome to go to is even sitting on the grounds of any temple. We have some beautiful temples. And I, I use the analogy of, you know, when, when a boat is in a sea, when a seawater vessel needs to clear off all the junk that it accumulates as it floats in the ocean, it just goes to a freshwater port. It's faster than figuring out and scraping everything else off of it. The same with the same way I look at the temple and even just looking and talking to God talking to Heavenly Father and saying, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. It is amazing, especially I have seen with traumatic experiences how quickly the Lord answers. And it's not just with traumatic experiences. He answers all the time and He gives us peace and He gives us joy and He gives us guidance. He gives us direction. It's time for your next episode of life. It will never take away from the horrible choice that somebody else made that injured your life. But remember, every time you're not thinking about that, you're doing pretty well. 
And the less you think about it, the more it'll disappear from your mind. Stop breathing life into these horrible experiences. You don't have to relive them. Please understand. I know some people out there will have you relive them. Please don't do that. You will, have, you will be back in those yucky feelings. Is it saying, hey, don't do this. Don't come back here. You, you, can, you can look at your experiences fresh and see, okay, well, yeah, that was a cruddy experience. And every time I think about it, it feels awful. Well, do I want to continue thinking about it or do I want to focus on the incredible and amazing life that God has available for me? There is no judgment again in what I'm about to say next. But what if I was saying, what, what if what I was saying was true? What if you could get over a traumatic experience faster than you could imagine? Would you want to? Would you want to be past that experience? Would you want to be moving forward in your life? Would you want to be moving forward on that amazing road that Heavenly Father is guiding and directing you towards? Or do you want to continue to go down the path that hurts every time you go down? Man, I'm thinking about this experience. Oh my goodness, that hurts like crazy. Oh wow, my, my body's getting hot. See, when your body like gets super hot, it just means you're overthinking. It just means you're overheating the same way a car engine does. Well, hold up. I'm overthinking. Uh, I mean, I had a thought this morning and I don't know if it's true, but possibly some headaches are even just caused by overthinking. Like, I don't know if that last thing's true. It's just a thought I had. So I want to give you permission today. Like, I'm not saying you don't have to go about the different recourses. Of course, if somebody is in an accident, it's like I, like I was in an accident, you know, back in January and you, and it was not my fault. And I mean, I don't hold any animosity towards the person, but you better believe their, their insurance is still paying for my car, still paying for my medical bills, still paying for everything. It, like there's a difference between letting go and just saying, no, they don't, they don't get any, like, I, I'm going to take the hit of everything. No, I'm not doing that. And so if there's things that need to be done, you know, if you need to tell somebody, if somebody needs to go to jail for what they did, that, that's the way it works. I'm not saying not to do that. I'm just saying stop holding on to your thinking and your feelings well, not, not your feelings necessarily, but your thinking around the experiences that have happened to you. Let them go. Let them go. You don't need them anymore. And as you let them go, you know, one of the things I did many years ago was I kneeled down and I said a prayer and I literally forgave everybody that had ever hurt me or done anything unkind to me or even I thought did something unkind to me. And I just prayed and asked Heavenly Father to, you know, forgive. I essentially forgave them all. I've got challenges too. I, I do things that are wrong. It's funny, I was actually talking to, you know, a girl recently about something I'd said back in high school and she'd totally forgotten it. But you know who hadn't forgotten it? Me. Now, do I understand that I was a kid and it was, I was just a kid? Yeah, I do. But it still was in my mind. It's really cool to have that conversation and even for her to say, I don't even remember that. And it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't awful, but it was, it was enough that I remembered it. 
I would invite you to forgive, not in a legal sense. No, if somebody did something, like, by all means, you know, like, you know, you have to take care of yourself. And, but I would invite you to forgive them. And if they're no longer around, you can still forgive them. Even just out loud, just say, I forgive you. When you forgive the people that have hurt you, you're letting go of the hot coal. I remember a story told about a woman that went around after she was in the concentration camps and talked all about, you know, I can't remember exactly, but essentially like forgiveness and, you know, and joy and all those things. And then one day she was speaking. And she noticed a man in the back of the room. And she had been in the concentration camps. And this man had been one of her attackers, one of the guards. And she said, well, here I've, in her head, here I've been talking about forgiveness, but I cannot forgive him. My sister died in that concentration camp. And in that moment, she turned to God. She prayed to a loving Heavenly Father and said, I'll reach out my hand and you give me the feeling. She said she reached out her hand and she said, I forgive you, brother. And then the most beautiful feeling came over her and she said, with all my heart. If somebody can forgive somebody else, where their, their sibling has literally died, I understand rape and those things of that nature are wrong. They take away our innocence. But how much longer do you want to suffer? How, how much longer do you want to suffer in pain and agony? Forgive them. The Savior gave us the greatest example when he said for, to the, when he said on the cross, forgive them for they know not what they've done. If these people were not in the right mind that did things to you, forgive them. Because if they were doing things that weren't in good things, then they obviously weren't in their right minds. Forgive them. As you forgive them, and as you stop holding on to the thoughts that you have surrounding your trauma, you will find freedom. The Lord said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You're heavy laden with your burdens. You're heavy laden with your thoughts. Give them back over to God. Give Him your doubts. Give Him your sorrows. Give Him your sadnesses. Talk to Him. I would also say... Some traumatic experiences may involve just you. Forgive yourself too. You didn't know any better. In my semi-traumatic experience that I shared last week, I didn't know any better. I was just trying to follow what God wanted me to do. And so are you. Yeah, there's a story told um, by a man. It, he, he felt a prompting to go out and check on his kids, and he didn't. And one of his children died in a bucket of water. You know what was amazing? 
is how he could share that story with the world of a time that he really messed up. I'm not judging him, guys, just to be very clear. About how he really messed up and he lost his kid because of it. Sometimes our, our choices and our actions and even our own traumatic experiences are brought on by us not listening. And the funny thing is, our memory changes. I mean, they've done studies and they've shown different videos and they've asked people if they've seen different things and people saw things that weren't even there. So I promise you, if you feel like something bad happened in your life or you feel like you, you weren't there for, you know, somebody else and like, I mean, let, let's, we'll go with this example because I know plenty of people probably struggle with this. You might have had a thought to reach out to a friend or a family member or somebody close to you. And then they might have passed away, whether that was through their own doing or some other way. You might have had a thought to warn somebody. You might have had a thought. Be patient with yourself. You did the best you knew, given your thinking at the time. And, and you can't, there are no alternative realities. You can't go back and say, well, this would have happened. You have no idea. It might not have happened at all. You just would stop thinking about it. And if you need to, go to Heavenly Father and ask Him to give you peace and say, I did the best I knew. I thought I, I thought I was supposed to say this thing and I didn't. People have their agency. You don't have to carry guilt and shame anymore. You don't have to relive that experience. You don't have to think about everything you could have or should have done differently. That would not be God telling you to do that. That would be the adversary. He wants to destroy you. He wants to make your life miserable like he is. The Lord would not have you hold on to guilt for the rest of your life. I don't believe off I believe some guilt doesn't come from Heavenly Father. I know it does talk about guilt in the scriptures, so like I, I don't know exactly how that works. But I believe when we go to him in a loving way with, a, with an open mind and a peaceful heart and say, Hey, I really did the best I knew how. Gives us peace. Please don't stay up night after night after night. I know many people struggle with that. Thinking of things that you could have done differently. Understand and know that you were doing the best you knew how, given your thinking in that moment. And you have no idea whether what you would have done would have helped somebody anyways. But you don't have to hold on to that coal in your hand and continue to burn yourself. If only I would have done this, they'd be okay. Maybe. You did the best you knew how. Let yourself go. Let, let yourself move forward with peace. Let yourself experience that joy that comes from turning over your doubts, your sorrows, your worries, and everything else to a loving Savior. Guys, whatever it is that's holding you back, if you stop thinking about that thing, you will find peace. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, 
It's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on, and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me, depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world, then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.